Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. When you add new vendors, they will have their default information set to match the settings that are specified by your vendor defaults. You can change this default information that appears if necessary. Then all you will have to enter is information that is unique to each vendor. You add new vendors through the Maintain Vendors window in Sage 50. You can access this window by choosing Maintain and then Vendors from the menu bar. The top of the Maintain Vendors window has two text fields and one checkbox. The first text field is the Vendor ID, which is the code that you enter to uniquely identify your vendors. There's also the name of the vendor, and this is the name that you want to show on reports and bills received from the vendor. The checkbox, called Inactive, is the box that you check to make a vendor record inactive. On the General tab, you input the vendor's contact and primary mailing address information into the fields provided. You can enter a contact name for the vendor into the contact field. You can enter your account number assigned by this vendor into the account number field. You then enter the address to which you remit vendor payments into the mailing address fields. You can then enter the city, state, and zip for the vendor, as well as the country if needed. You can click the Copy to Remit to Address 1 button to copy the information you just entered to the primary Remit to Address that's shown on the Addresses tab if desired. You can enter a vendor type of your choosing into the field of the same name. The value within this field can later be used to filter vendors for reporting purposes. You can set the 1099 type for vendors that need a 1099, such as subcontractors. The expense account field shown is the default general ledger account used for transactions with this vendor. You can change this on a per transaction level as needed. You then enter the primary and secondary phone numbers for the vendor into the Telephone 1 and Telephone 2 fields. You can enter a fax number into the fax field. Then enter the vendor's email and website address into the email and website fields if desired. You can then enter the data that you wish to record for this specific vendor record into the Customizable Fields section. These fields are the ones that you created for your vendors when you set your vendor defaults. Next, on the Addresses tab, you can copy the vendor's mailing addresses to any one of the selected Remit To address lines that are shown. You can do this by selecting the desired Remit To address from the Copy Mailing Address To dropdown, and then click the adjacent Copy button. You can also manually add or edit the information recorded for the different Remit To addresses listed at the bottom of the Addresses tab by simply clicking into the desired row and entering the information into the columns that are shown. Next, click the History tab. You can access the Beginning Balances window for your vendors by clicking the Vendor Beginning Balances button that appears at the bottom of the History tab. In the Vendor Beginning Balances window, you can enter the dates and amounts of bills that you received but have not yet paid to your vendors as of the start date of your company file. You do this if activity if you had one or more outstanding bills from vendors which you owed as of the start date of your Sage 50 company file. Just click the Save button to finish recording these bills and close the window when you're done. Note that the History tab also tracks and shows your purchases, payments, and last payment information for the selected vendor. This information is updated every time you enter a transaction for a vendor. You can enter historical information when creating a new vendor. After that, Sage 50 will then track and show information about your recent transactions with this vendor on this tab. On the Purchase Info tab, you enter purchase information about the vendor. Here you assign the vendor's tax ID number if you have to send the vendor a 1099, 
your preferred method of shipping from them, and your terms with the vendor. The Tax ID Number field is used for vendors that have a tax number that you must input if you plan on sending them a 1099 miscellaneous or 1099 interest form. The Ship Via field is used to select the default shipping method used by this vendor to send you products. This is a field that you can always customize at the time of purchase as well. You can then set specific terms that you have been assigned from this vendor if they differ from your vendor defaults by selecting the Customize Terms for this vendor choice from the Terms and Credit drop-down. You can then set your specific terms from this vendor in the area below the drop-down if needed. You can also select how the vendor prefers forms sent to them in the Form Options section. You can select either a paper form or email. When you print items such as purchase orders from the Select or Report or Form window, this choice determines whether the form will be displayed for printing or automatically emailed. When you've finished entering the vendor's information within the Maintain Vendors window, you can click the Save button in the toolbar at the top of the window to save the information and leave it displayed on screen. Alternately, if entering many vendor records at once, you can simply click the Save a New button to save the vendor's record and create a new blank vendor record to enter another new vendor if desired. When you're finished using the window, simply click the Close button to close it. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.